Let's begin by turning on Photoshop for the first time. So wherever you have your application housed, go and double click on it and open the application. Here is Photoshop CS6 user interface. Up to Photoshop CS6, interfaces were typically light gray colored. They changed quite a bit visually about Photoshop. And everything after CS6 has the same look so far. Right now, the, uh, the newest update, I believe, is Creative Cloud 2014, and it's extremely similar to CS6. This is known as the user interface. It pops up as an entire window on a Mac side, and you can optimize the space on your screen by clicking the little green button in the top right, or I'm sorry, the top left corner of Photoshop. Photoshop is made up of panels, and the panels are highly adjustable and can be brought up or hidden or minimized. So this is a panel right here and if I click and drag this tab over I've torn it off and I can move it around by clicking and dragging on that top little bar. Now I can put this back where I got it by clicking on the word color and dragging it over here till a blue line shows up around the panel I want to add it to and it will become a tab that I can tab between. You can minimize these windows by double clicking on one of those tabs if by chance you don't even have this on your screen, what if yours looks like this, um, which is actually a high probability if you're working on a laptop, you can expand that by clicking the double arrows in the top right of the panel, and that will expand. You'll notice that to the left of the panels that were showing when you first opened it up, there are a couple of small buttons. These are actually more of the same panels. So if you click on one of these, it will pop up a temporary panel, but you can also click the little double arrow to expand it to show what those panels are in their entirety. Mostly, while you're working, you'll probably take a few times playing with Photoshop to move panels around and get things exactly where you want them. Photoshop remembers what you do with panels so that the next time you open up your Photoshop, they're right where you left them. There is a list of panels. You can find every panel in Photoshop available under the Window menu. So if I come down to one of these for character, for example, and click on it, it doesn't have a check by it, so I know it's not open. Then it will open up the panel and dock it over here on the right. And then I can rearrange this whole thing if I want. Character and paragraph are two that I keep open all the time. So I'm going to click and grab this top gray area, which means I can drag that selection of panels, and I can move it over here. Now you'll notice if I hover over a panel, it highlights a blue line around the whole thing. That will add it as tabs. But if you move between a couple of those panels, there's just a blue line that will fit that right in between those. On the left are the tools of Photoshop, and on the top is the tool control bar. As you click through the tools, you'll notice that the information on the top control bar changes for the tool. You might also notice there is a small white arrow in the bottom right hand corner of most of these tools. That just means that there's additional tools related to the one that you're seeing docked here. And if you click and hold down, then you can move over and choose one of the tools that is not immediately shown. Each tool has its own keyboard shortcut. You certainly don't need to learn the sh keyboard shortcuts for tools, but I would recommend picking one or two new ones each time you use Photoshop to learn. Uh, I use them extensively and it definitely helps me go faster, but that's your call if you want to learn them. On the site resources, there are printable charts and if you are working with keyboard shortcuts, it's a good idea to print those out and have them handy. The Down towards the bottom of the toolbar, you'll notice that there's a couple of squares. These are your color chips, and if you click on one, you'll notice that a color picker opens up, and I'll be getting more into that in a later video. At the bottom is also an additional couple of panels called Mini Bridge and Timeline. Bridge is a window browser that you can use to find your files. Now, I don't like having 
mini bridge open um, in my Photoshop. I find that it tends to make Photoshop run a tiny bit slower and it just sort of gets in the way. And then timeline is for making motion graphics, which isn't something I'm going to cover in this Photoshop one course. So you can close panels that you don't want to see by clicking on the panel drop down menu. Each panel has a drop down menu and it is in the top right corner of the panel. And if you click on it, you get a menu that shows up. And you can say close this tab or close tab group. And I'm going to close this tab group. In case you want to come back to the way Photoshop had the panels automatically set up, what you can do is restore the workspace. A workspace is just a arrangement of panels that you've asked Photoshop to remember and it actually comes with several workspaces preset. Workspaces can be found over here on the right of the tool control panel. If you click on this one that says essentials, which is probably what's showing right now, you'll have some options. I'm going to come down and choose the one that says typography. And you'll notice that my panel selection changed. This is this way Photoshop thinks I need to work with panels if I'm working with specifically typography. And I can also go back to the one that I had just set up by clicking on essentials again and it will remember the last way I had that set up. Now if you do want to reboot your workspace, you can do that by clicking on the workspace button and then going down to reset and it will list whichever workspace you happen to be on. So I can say reset essentials and there it is. Now if you are a Photoshop user from previous versions, the dark gray might be a little new for you. I would suggest trying it out for a few days and just see how that goes. Dark gray is a neutral and it's intended to help you see truer color on the projects you work on, but you can actually still change it to the original color if you would like. There's quite a few things in Photoshop that you can change and customize to your preferences. In fact, where we're going to go is called preferences. It's under the Photoshop menu. Go to Preferences and choose General. All of these will show up when you sh click on General. Each one of these on the side opens up a whole bunch of different options. You can click through there and see what's available. The one I would suggest changing right now is the Performance and changing the history states to something over 20. I would go somewhere between 20 and 50, but not over 50. The higher this number is, the more your computer has to remember and the more it could slow down. I have a pretty powerful computer and it's never given me trouble when I work with 50 history states. That allows me to go back quite a ways in my work if I decide that I want to undo something. The Options for the interface that you can choose are under interface and here is the color theme. You can see that's changing as I click on those. You can also do things like have your window open as tabs, which is what Photoshop will automatically do and we'll actually see here in just a minute. But you can take a look through these and see if there's anything that you want to tweak and then when you're done just click OK. I actually prefer the darker uh, background. So I'm actually going to go right back into that and change it back to the mid dark. In Photoshop, there may be a time that you need to find something and you're not sure what menu it is in. Please be aware there is a help menu. If you click on it, the very top is a blue bar that says search and you can type in an action here such as save and then when you scroll down, this is listed as a menu item, it will pop open the menu and point to what you're looking for with a big blue arrow. Beneath that are help topics, so if you click on something that has the little lifesaver icon, then it will open up the help center and you can search further within that. Other places to go for help are the class website. There is a tab at the top called Photoshop Help. If you click on that, there's a couple things. There are, I've listed the uh, kind of the top 10 or so things that when I work with students, the things that go wrong. So for example, how can I find something 
uh, how can I find where something is in the menus? We just went over that. Photoshop isn't working or doing what I want to. The way this works is you try the top thing listed and if it doesn't work, go to the next thing. The other option that you have here is to click the Photoshop Help button and that will actually take you right to Adobe Photoshop's Support Center and you can go into the Help or search for other articles on the Adobe site. In case you're curious, I'm going to do the switch quite often. If you're on a Mac, you can hold down Command and push the Tab key, which will open up this bar that shows all of the apps that are open. And then if you keep Command held down and push Tab a couple times, you can go to whichever program that you want to open and then let go of Command and it will switch back there. Once you've gone through the windows and panels to see sort of what there is and maybe arrange things a little bit. Let's begin by creating a new canvas in the next video.